here we are tutorial six in galactic mail tutorials we're past halfway and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at collision masks so far in our galactic mail journey we have looked at end steps animation ends we have learned the actions of set um, direction variable wrap around the room jump to point set sprite and change instance we've learned about room layers sub images and sprite animation object coordinates and directions we have ticked off a significant part of our specifications. Um, mostly we just got to deal with levels from now on. So we've got a spaceship which works, moon and asteroids, and a rudimentary scoring system at the moment. Okay, this video is going to be a little bit tricky um, to try to see why we're doing what we're doing. Um, basically we're a situation where this game has a little error to it. And the error is that you can fly close to an asteroid and not actually hit the asteroid and it was still trigger. You see how close that was there that I was actually a distance away from the asteroid when it actually triggered. So this is because the area of collision doesn't line up directly with the shape of the rocket. Okay. So let's see. So let's see how we solve that problem. So this is all dealing with the sprite area. So I'm going to open them back up and I need to change the collision masks. Okay, so let's have a look at some of these. First off, I'm going to have a look at the collision mask of flying. We're not so much concerned about the moon or the asteroids. Actually, no, we'll start with the moon. Right, at the moment, if we come over here to collision mask, you can see the collision mask is square. It's this gray area over here. So if I was to touch here, even though I'm actually not touching the moon, it would think that I'm still actually touching the moon. So what we're going to do is we're going to go manual and we're going to choose an ellipse. You can see there's different types of ones you're going to have. And some of them are slow and some of them are not. But it's right, this game isn't huge. I'm going to choose a manual ellipse. And I'll look at that. It's actually brought the gray in. You can see here. It's brought the gray in, so it's actually circled around the circle. So now if my ship flies past here, it won't actually trigger the moon because it won't consider this a collided with the moon. So I'm just gonna close that up there. The asteroid is a bit trickier because the asteroid is an ugly lumpy thing. Now, what we're gonna do is a little bit of look at a little bit of gaming psychology here. We could we could just make it automatic precise which means it's very lumpy in that. But what we're gonna do, because uh, precise is very slow, it takes extra processing power. We're going to go to ellipse, but we're actually gonna reduce the ellipse. So if I can, instead of making it automatic, I can make it manual and make it well and truly within the, within the asteroid. Because whilst many people will be more than happy to complain about the fact that I didn't hit that asteroid, most people won't complain about the fact that they thought they hit the asteroid, but they didn't actually crash. So we're just going to bring it in there, have a little bit of leeway for people so they won't complain as much and they'll be happy because the idea of making games is to make people happy. So the flying object with this one, we're actually going to, um, make the collision mass precise because it's really weird and this is the, the really important it's a weird shape and this is the important one so automatic precise frame so only on those areas that it is highlighted which is the gray part which you can hardly see is if it collides and touches that will be considered a collision so let's close that down and see now if we can notice a difference Loading up, thank you, and I see if I find myself a that was really good start. So you can see I got really close to that asteroid without actually uh, that wasn't good. And him, I, I actually skewed it around him. No, I didn't actually skew it, I actually hit him, but the collision mask was making a difference there. And previously those would have actually triggered a collision and end of game. Okay, there we go. In this video, we're going to look at one particular area error which occurs during the game, which you might not have picked up on, but if you played it long enough, I'm sure you would. 
So there you go, we have used collision marks to reduce an error or a likely errorhood, or likelihood of an error in the actual game. And in this video, you've learned about the new concept of collision masks.